Cooked crabs not only make a flavorful, mouth-watering dish for seafood lovers. Live crabs in a bucket, barrel, basket, or pot also serve as a metaphor for spiteful individuals who nip and pull down their own kind just so that they can work their way to the top. Maybe you have been a victim to this kind of negative relationship. Or maybe you have had a coworker or a colleague that makes your work life difficult or strips the joy of your hard-earned workplace advances. Maybe there's someone online that comments against your good news and personal accomplishments. What can you do if you have to work, live, or deal with people that have crab mentality? Having to deal with people that want to drag us down is an unfortunate part of life. Fortunately, the Bible gives us the solution. Crab mentality is a cruel mindset. A person who thinks this way works to take anyone down who would achieve something that they wanted for themselves. The central thought of someone with crab mentality is, if I can't have it, no one can. They may deny it, but what truly drives such people to weigh others down is envy or jealousy. Instead of being happy for someone else's success or achievements, those people feel jealous. Because they don't want to be outclassed, they come up with different ways to stop others from achieving success. This behavior is not new. We could read about it with multiple characters in the Bible. Each character's story leaves us a clue to learn about dealing with envy and behavior fueled by jealousy. Let's start with Isaac's experience found in Genesis. Genesis 26, and we'll read 12 until verse 15. Isaac planted crops in that land and took a huge harvest. God blessed him. The man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. He accumulated flocks and herds and many, many servants, so much so that the Philistines began to envy him. They got back at him by throwing dirt and debris into all the wells that his father's servants had dug back in the days of his father Abraham, clogging up all the wells. Who is one servant of God that experienced others with crab mentality? Isaac. What happened to Isaac? He had a productive harvest. He was very successful in his work. However, his Philistine neighbors weren't celebrating for him. They could have simply gotten curious about the reason for his success. But as we read, that's not what they did. They worked to attempt to prevent future success. They were so jealous of Abraham's son that they secretly stopped up his wells to prevent him from watering his fields. Most of us today can relate to Isaac's ordeal with his envious neighbors. It's not just around the neighborhood that such incidents happen. Even at the workplace, in school, or even within a household or the entire family, jealousy gets the better of some people. And when it does, those people sometimes do worse than merely stopping up one's wells. We asked around and it turns out that today's stories about jealousy cause people to do some really horrible actions. What not, what's something nasty that people usually do to each other when they're competing for someone or something? Oh, they uh, like they try to uh, like tell the girl like something bad about him or embarrassing about him. They will um, lie to you just to, just to get to the next level. My sister's friend called her boyfriend cheating. like texting another girl and then she went to his work. She made a show in front of everyone because she was jealous, obviously. Well, yeah, there were was, was, was some girls who skipped the class because they were jealous about a boy. So um, they skipped the afternoon class just to get to the boy to make discussions of and the other girl got jealous too. And they think it's okay. They don't, they don't see no wrong in it at all. And when you try to tell them, they take offense to it and then they get mad at you. I believe the people that are jealous transcend their own feelings into you. They might accuse you of things because they feel guilty themselves. And um, I think it's unfair. Just exactly how mean can people fueled by envy get? There's another story in the Bible of one who was a victim of crab mentality. The result of jealousy against him, though, 
resulted in his death. Who also suffered from the crab mentality of others, according to the Bible? Let's read in Genesis. We'll read 4, 3 until verse 5. It says this. One day, Cain gave part of his harvest to the Lord, and Abel also gave an offering to the Lord. He killed the firstborn lamb from one of his sheep and gave the Lord the best parts of it. The Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering, but not with Cain and his offering. This made Cain so angry that he could not hide his feelings. Who also suffered from the crab mentality of others, according to the Bible? Abel. Who was Abel? He was one of the first two sons of Adam and Eve, the first man and woman created by God. How is it that Abel also suffered from crab mentality? According to the passages we just read, Abel made an offering to the Lord, together with his brother Cain. However, God accepted Abel's offering, but not Cain's. Cain saw that his brother had done well in preparing an offering that was pleasing to God. But instead of being happy for his brother and learning from him how to properly offer to God, he became angry. And how else does the Bible describe the jealousy that took over Cain, who killed his brother Abel? Let's read in 1 John We'll read 3 and the verses 12. This is what's written. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. How did the Bible describe the jealousy that took over Cain against his brother? The Bible said his own actions were evil. How evil were the actions of Cain? The Bible said that Cain belonged to the evil one or the devil. It is a fact that is sad for many. Envy and jealousy can turn even one's closest friend or even family member into a dangerous enemy. And how did one of the church leaders describe the dangerous behavior of people like this? Let's read what Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 1, 29 until verse 31. They are filled with every kind of sin, evil, greed, and hatred. They are full of jealousy, murder, fighting, lying, and thinking the worst things about each other. They gossip and say evil things about each other. They hate God. They are rude, proud, and brag about themselves. They invent ways of doing evil. They don't obey their parents. They are foolish. They don't keep their promises and they show no kindness or mercy to others. How did Apostle Paul describe those full of jealousy? He said they are full of jealousy. They are filled with every kind of sin. Even though it's common in any family or organization for disputes to come up because of hints of jealousy, we shouldn't tolerate this as Christians in our own homes or organizations. Envy is not something that true Christians should keep in their hearts. Instead, what should we do if there is jealousy in any of us? Let's read in 1 Peter 2, 1. So then stop doing anything to hurt others. Don't lie anymore. And stop trying to fool people. Don't be jealous or say bad things about others. What should we do if there's jealousy in any of us? Well, we need to completely flush it out of our system. The Bible teaches us not to be jealous. We also need to make the decision to stop doing things that would hurt others. The Bible teaches us to stop being hateful and start being sincere. Make the decision to keep negative comments and jealousy-driven remarks out of our actions. We can't change others, but we can certainly make good changes for ourselves. And why should we drive out enviousness and only thinking about our own selves? Let's read in the book of James. We'll read 3 and the verses 16. This is what the Bible tells us. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Why should we drive out enviousness and only thinking about our own selves? Well, jealousy and selfishness also creates confusion in every evil thing. If all we are is full of envy or thinking about our own personal gains or advancement, we're in danger of falling into confusion and other evil works. And who is the real source of selfishness and jealousy? 
Let's read that in James 3, and the verse is 14 until 15. If you are selfish and have bitter jealousy in your hearts, you have no reason to boast. Your boasting is a lie that hides the truth. That kind of wisdom does not come from God. That wisdom comes from the world. It is not spiritual. It is from the devil. Jealousy comes from the devil. This is why it's important that we stop negative comments and thoughts about others. When we stop that kind of thinking, we're able to stay away from the feelings of envy and selfishness. Nowadays, with social media, it's too easy to watch people or personally experience getting blasted, cyberbullied, hated, trolled. The internet is full of negative thoughts. So what's the solution? What's the Christian way of handling haters and jealous people? Apostle Peter reminds us in his book, in 1 Peter 3, 8 until verse 9, So all of you should live together in peace. Try to understand each other. Love each other like brothers and sisters. Be kind and humble. Don't do wrong to anyone to pay them back for doing wrong to you. Or don't insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you. But ask God to bless them. Do this because you yourselves were chosen to receive a blessing. What if you become the envy of the people around you and for some reason you get the taste of being the subject of malicious talks and false accusations by those jealous of you? The solution in dealing with those with crab mentality is to not return evil for evil or send insults back at those who attempt to insult us. Don't let the hate and vindictiveness creep up on you and push you to do the wrong thing to get back at them. That's not the Christian way of dealing with such situations. Why is it that we should resist letting evil people get to us? Let's read in Proverbs 24. We'll read 19 and 21. Don't let evil people worry you or make you jealous. My children, you must respect the Lord and the King, and you must not make friends with anyone who rebels against either of them. Why is it that we can calmly walk away or even return evil with good? Because the Bible teaches us not to let evil people worry us. Don't let them cause us to get jealous either. If we do this, we are showing that we respect the Lord. And what will the Lord do for us? In Proverbs 3, 32. Such crooked people are disgusting to the Lord, but he is a friend to those who are good and honest. How does God think of people that act on envy and jealousy? Well, they are called crooked people, and they disgust God. Imagine that. God is disgusted by people that cause trouble, people that act on envy and jealousy. Instead of harboring envy or jealousy against one another, what should be there within us? What should we be filled with so that there's no room for bitterness, jealousy, or envy? Let's read in 1 Corinthians 13. We'll read 4 until verse 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So let's fill our hearts with love. For it's through love that we can truly be freed of all evil thoughts and ill feelings. If your neighbor has greener grass, Congratulate him or her and ask them where they buy their fertilizer. If your colleague gets the promotion, well, congratulate him or her and ask your boss what you can do to improve. If your family member buys a new car, congratulate them and let them know where that they could get good car washes. Positive and encouraging reactions are not typically found in those who do not have the wisdom that comes from God. However, they are what the people of God, filled with love, would do. Godly people should not be divided as crabs that attack. Going back to our crab metaphor, if we don't help one another, 
we fail altogether to get out of the bucket. It is our prayer that all of you joining us on this program will keep God's words in your hearts. Together, we'll commit to living a godly and not worldly lives. Thank you for joining us on The Solution. We'll see you next time.